the quiet, rainy streets of the suburbs of Wolverhampton. It is an unlikely place to live in fear of assassination. But Kuan Singh Matada was sitting here at home watching an Indian television channel when this came on. A news report naming enemies of the state. And he was one of them. We know that we've become the government's targets. So that does not mean that we are safe and can get on with our day to day as normal. Whenever we go outside or travel, we're very careful and since then haven't left the country because the Indian government has given us such a big threat. The list came from India's National Investigation Agency, its counter-terror department. Kuwant is speaking for the first time on television. He's an activist who supports a Sikh homeland, separate from India, called Khalistan. As a result of the list, he constantly checks the CCTV that covers his house. And when he drives to work, he changes his vehicle and his route. Since the hit list was released, I've been feeling insecure that something may happen in the future. If I'm assassinated, then it's the British government's total responsibility. It feels safe here in suburbia, or at least it should, but it doesn't for Kuan. And that's because people who believe the same things as he does in different countries around the world have ended up dead. For Sikh activists, it looks like a roundup by the Indian government. Critics say that the Indian government is conducting a global assassination campaign, a claim India denies. These four men were all mentioned in the same video as Kuant. Hardeep Singh Nijer was gunned down in Vancouver in June last year by Indian agents, according to Canada. The United States foiled the assassination of Gurpatwant Singh Panu around the same time. In the UK, another prominent activist, Avtar Singh Kanda, suddenly died. Police here have repeatedly said this was because of natural causes, but many in the activist community think the death was suspicious. And in Pakistan, Paramjit Singh Panjwa was also shot dead. All four incidents happened within weeks of each other. We asked the Indian High Commission for comment, but a spokesperson said it wouldn't be possible to supply a response before broadcast because of the various different government departments involved. India characterizes Sikh activism as extremism and terrorism. And there is a violent, bloody history, with hundreds of deaths on both sides, including the assassination of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi by her Sikh bodyguards in 1984. Those tensions, those complexities are still alive. And they're even on display in this Gurdwara, a Sikh place of worship in Birmingham. Sikhs are being targeted across, uh, across the borders in different countries and now governments are speaking up about it. So they're very concerned about that. They're concerned about the British government not speaking up about it. When we're talking about martyrs here, on that wall are the people who assassinated Indira Gandhi, who's elected Prime Minister of India. The Indian government would say, well, that's sort of glorifying terrorism. One man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. So uh, these guys stood up uh, when the Indian government was going around from village to village. A Home Office spokesperson told Sky News that British Sikhs contribute immensely to the strength of UK society, that it continually assess potential threats in the UK, and that they take the protection of individuals' rights, freedoms and safety in the UK very seriously. Those words don't feel like much protection here in the Midlands. So in the meantime, they've hired extra security themselves. Tom Cheshire, Sky News, Birmingham.